how I traveled to one, two, three, four countries in the last 15 months while working full time and investing in real estate. Keep watching and you're about to find out how I did it. Before I go any farther, just make sure you smash that like button, you click subscribe and you comment down below. It's the only way these videos can go to more people so I can educate them on how to invest in real estate. So why am I so passionate about real estate? Real estate has opened up my mind, but also has opened up so much freedom. And that freedom is the ability to travel. Now, I know many people who are not as fortunate as I am because they are, you know, bogged down by debt and by a job um, that they just can't get away from. Um, and a job that just doesn't let them travel. So, you know, in North America, it's very um, popular that when you start a position, you usually start with between two to four weeks vacation. Now, uh, my job, I'm allowed between three to four weeks of vacation uh, per year. And unlike many people who can't necessarily travel because they don't have the funds, I take advantage of every single day I have off to make sure I see somewheres new. And in the last 15 months, I have, see, I have visited Colombia, Peru, Japan, and the USA. So it's kind of a thing that every new country I go to, I always end up bringing home some currency just because, I don't know, for me, I enjoy money and I enjoy seeing all the different currencies that each country has to offer. But how did I get here? Now, um, I have built a small real estate portfolio um, and totaling four properties that produce enough cash flow that allow me essentially to live for free, um, but also travel pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, um, I'm not gonna rely 100% on my real estate income because um, I also use a lot of points uh, here in Canada, so credit cards, sign-up bonus points, and stuff like that, which uh, I'm not an expert in, but I will probably do a video later on about how I use points in order to travel the world. But this particular video is gonna be focused on how I live for free and am able to travel between three to four weeks a year. Now, if any of you have ever watched any of my videos, you know I'm an advocate for rent hacking or house hacking, which is essentially trying to live for free. And that's either by purchasing a property where you can rent out half uh, and have your tenants pay your mortgage and your property tax and, and, and even more in some uh, instances, or by rent hacking, which is essentially renting a property and having a roommate move in to help subsidize the cost. Now, why am I an advocate of this? The reason being is because the average person in North America spends anywhere from 30 to 40% of their take home pay on shelter. Now, again, depending on your area in Canada, this is usually um, between 15,000 and $25,000 per year. Now, just by eliminating 15,000 or $25,000 by either house hacking or rent hacking, that is 15 to $25,000 that you have in order to travel or whatever, save, pay down debt, whatever it is. This is why I just cannot say how important it is, it is enough to buy a property where you can rent out a portion to subsidize your mortgage, property taxes, utilities, and stuff like that. So like, let me add up what these uh, places might have cost. So let's get rid of this here. So, you know, the first place I visited was Colombia. So for flights and hotels, you know, if, because I'm saving, let's say $20,000 a year, um, because I am, house hacking, Columbia over a two week stay or a week stay, um, I believe cost me a total of $2,500. Again, I did use some uh, credit card points for this, but um, even then $2,500 is what I spent. 
Um, I visited Japan. Now Japan was extremely expensive, but it was a place that me and my fiance had to go to because it was just on our bucket list. But you know, Japan ended up costing us $5,000 each. We also flew to Peru. Peru was a very short trip. We were only there for a total of six days and Peru costed us $1,500. Uh, and we stayed in Airbnbs, which helped subsidize the cost. But most of that actually went to um, the flights. And our most recent trip was um, New York City, which we only went for three days and I ended up driving to New York City because of my geographic location. But that only ended up costing us a thousand dollars now all these trips which totaled four weeks of traveling cost me a total of can you guys see that yeah so ten thousand dollars which still left me ten thousand dollars left over to keep traveling um, so um, as you can see if I was paying a mortgage and paying twenty thousand dollars a year to live this traveling right here might not have been possible or if it was possible it would have been um, a lot more stressful in terms of financing these vacations and that's what i see a lot i do see a lot of people financing vacations on credit cards or or lines of credit um, just so they can travel the world when all they really need to do is a lot of them already have a property that's a full single family home with a basement all they have to do is convert that basement into a secondary unit and they can start getting paid to live or essentially live for free or live for very little. And all that money that they're saving, that they're earning from their apartment can be put into traveling, can be put into savings, could be put into another rental property. Now I know this really depends on the city you live in and your overall circumstances. Um, for me, you know, I've been fortunate enough that I've had a significant other um, be able to essentially move in and help pay for some of the day-to-day -day living expenses uh, and the overall cost of a property. Um, but, you know, for those people who are saying that it's impossible to buy a property, um, if you ever checked out my Instagram, I have a post on there where it just shows how much money you actually need to purchase a property for a down payment. So, you know, if you're in a market that offers $100,000 properties, like there are some markets like that in Southwestern Ontario and even Northern Ontario and in and, and the States as well, you know, you only need for $100,000, $5,000. For $200,000, $10,000, for $300,000, $15,000, for $400,000, $20,000. Now, this is a lot more attainable if you have a significant other. But if you don't and you're on your own, like I was when I purchased my first property, you know, you only need 5% down. But it's very, very important that that 5% down is used wisely. And wisely is purchasing a property where you can rent out another section of it. Now, I, I know I re repeated myself four or five times already, but you have to purchase a property where you can house hack. So that's it for this video. It's a very short video this week, but I just wanted to um, really dive into how important house hacking is and how it has enabled me and my fiance to travel the world for essentially free. Because when you look at it, I'm getting paid to live in my own house and that money is just going into traveling. Um, so is it free? Yes, no. But at the end of the day, um, because of house hacking, we have been able to see more places than we could have ever dreamed of. And in 2020, we have another three to four destinations um, already planned. Uh, and I can't wait to share those on my Instagram. And by the way, if you are not following me, uh, it's Investor Travel Couple uh, on Instagram. Um, but also you can um, make sure you smash that like button and you click subscribe and comment down below. I'm always looking for new uh, ideas on how I can get more information out to the public, um, especially secrets like this that have enabled me to enjoy life to the fullest. So again, thank you all for watching.